I know you guys are probably wondering who this beautiful, gorgeous woman sitting alongside me is at this very table right here. Um. It's my girlfriend. Welcome, Chris. Thanks. I think I'm the only person that calls you Chris. Yeah, you definitely started Chris. Uh, no one ever called me Chris. I'm the originator. A I don't know how I thought of it. in my school, so. in my primary school, called me Chris, and I hated it. Well, but what? you started Chris, and now I think it's cool. But what about so Chris Jenner? That's C-H. No, it's not. It's K. Oh, shit. Oh, I'm so dumb. Is it actually? Yeah, it's K. Oh, wow. Why do I always see that as yeah, a Yeah, I think C-H? it's cool now. Okay. Well, thanks. Um, I just wanted to say before we get into juicy conversations, because this might be distracting throughout the episode. I just want to get it over with now because I'm a little self-conscious, and that's why I sat on the opposite side of the table that I normally do because I want to hide this side of my face because that's where this thing is. Anyway, I was skateboarding, and my... F- Skateboard, I guess, was tired of me stepping all over it, and it shot back up and hit me in the face, and it scraped me. Okay, now we can continue. All right, well, welcome to the table, and welcome back to Deeper with the Dolan Twins. I'm your host, Grayson Dolan, alongside this simp. What? Why am I a simp? Well, Cause just because the way you intro the episode. But that's what, fine. I'm, not, I'm allowed to say my girlfriend's beautiful and gorgeous. No, you totally are, and I think that if you're not a simp, you're probably a douchebag, and simps are probably just good guys. It's simp is like the is like the new age nice guy. Yeah, I get confused about when people call me a simp. You know, people say like nice guys finish last. That's basically just a simp. It's what exactly nice is guy. a simp? Yeah, what is a simp? You can't compliment your girlfriend anymore without being called a simp. I think that's a thing. I think it's like when you when you're just being nice. It's like maybe like reaching a little as, bit. As as a guy, it's not cool. Or like to be sucking nice. up. Yeah, but is that bad? Like, shouldn't you want to make your significant other feel good? Adele, you know what a simp is? Yeah, I got the definition. What is it? What's wrong with that? Slang. Someone who foolishly overvalues someone else. Foolishly overvalues. But but compliments, I don't know. I guess maybe Foolishly? That's weird. Yeah. I don't think I don't think my girlfriend could ever be overvalued. I don't, I don't think, think you'd be valued Aww. enough. Aww. Uh, well I don't think it's foolish. Was that simpish? I don't think it's foolish to to overvalue your significant other ever. So simp on. And that was probably the simpiest thing to say. <laughs> simp on! <laughs> Okay, whatever. We're going to get into this, guys. Oh, oh God, God. What are we getting into? Christina is our guest, and I have a juicy question to start this off. No, I'm not. It's not really. Okay. Are you nervous? Yeah, I'm so nervous. No, I wanted to I'm kick things off by just talking about how we all met. Do you guys recall how we met? Because I am responsible for the meeting. He, he's of sitting all of over us. there, like, he's sitting over there being like, I bet you guys don't know how you met. Of course, we remember how we fucking met. How'd you meet? I bet she doesn't remember. No, how we met, how we got in touch, right? Yeah, how, oh, like, you, how oh. you got, who, who, how'd you guys meet? Did so, it just, oh, so not, not how we I met thought, in person. How I we, thought Ethan was responsible, but when I came here. How we became aware we, of each other's existence, is that what you're trying to say? Yeah, yeah. Yes, okay. I thought it was you. And when I was at home and people asking me how, how we met, I was like, oh, Ethan saw me on a Snapchat and like asked who I was. And that's not what happened at all. Yeah, it was through not, Grayson actually. It was through me, but no, I but don't the, know where I got that. But from. that's what happened. That, but it is kind of what happened. You're, you're kind of on with that. Uh, okay, I just said the more romantic version of that. I guess. Yeah, I guess it was kind of romantic. I mean, I'm a romantic man. What's not romantic about me being involved? Hey, you, you being a wingman? Uh, yeah, I was. So I was, I was Snapchatting. With you're some, not a romantic man at all, bro. What are you cutting me off for, dude? You just because you called yourself a romantic no, man. No, you're just jealous, you bro. I'm jealous. Yeah, you're jealous of my romance, but. Basically, <laughs> bro, you better fucking stop because after this episode, me and you are going to have a bad romance. You know what? <laughs> oh, God. All right. No. All right, no, stop. Okay, listen. Okay. I'm telling the story. Okay. Um, sorry if that was awful. Oh, it was. Did you, yeah, I know. About, okay. About that joke. Thanks, man. It's okay. Thank uh, About it, man. I'm, it's all good. All right, but I had, I had someone on Snapchat. We were talking, and then we were supposed to hang out, and I think they couldn't because they were with you. And then I was like, well, and then I saw you on her story, and I was like, all right, what year are we talking here? You're jumping all around. 2016. He I'll seems really excited. It was 2016. I'll tell you, because I honestly remember probably better than you, because it wasn't six years plus ago. It was only four years ago. Okay. You so what six? happened was Grayson, no, a- anything six years plus ago, Grayson remembers oh, vividly, oh, 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 okay. but anything before that, he has no cl- He's like a fucking goldfish. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I'm a goldfish that has long-term brain. It was 2016. It was 2016. Mid 2016. Grayson I think. was communicating with someone on Snapchat like who, who 
was hanging out with you at the time. Yes, mm-hmm. we did have communications. And Grayson was Snapchatting her, and she sent the Snapchat of herself and you in the background. Yeah. And I, I was like there, and I peeped over Grayson's shoulder, and I was like, who was that in the background? And it was you. So it was romantic. I did find you. Aww. And I did think that you were gorgeous the moment I saw you on Thanks. that Snapchat. Thank you. And then, so it, okay, so now I'm out of the story. I just did the whole linking thing. Mm-hmm. Did you add Chris yeah. that day? Was it that? Yeah, I think so. Because I remember plans fell through and we couldn't hang out. So we didn't see each other in America. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I was leaving short after that. I think you were well. leaving like the next day. And I Snapchatted you and I was like, hey, like, and I, we, I kind of just introduced myself. And then we were going to like probably hang out all together in that group. Mm-hmm. And then you're like, oh, I'm going back to Australia. Yeah. Then do you want to talk about how you deleted me? Or I need to hear about this because <laughs> I didn't know. God. What why happened? Did, why did I delete you? Chris, well, why you did you... deleted me because... Just think about it. You went back <laughs> to Australia. Here, here's my take on why I deleted you. I, well, at least why I think my 16-year-old self deleted you on Because I couldn't hang out with you. No. Okay, you're making me sound like a fucking asshole. I'm a changed man. He's not a, he, he wasn't an asshole. He was never an asshole. No, he never was. No. Never. What happened was... I. It wasn't because we couldn't hang out. It was because you went back to Australia and I... Kept talking to you. I think I start, I think I didn't reply to you. Yeah, you well. wouldn't reply to me. I think you ghosted me. You ghosted him. me. So I took it as like, okay, this, she doesn't like me. She's not interested in me at all. Or she doesn't want to talk to me. So I just deleted you. I can't even I, remember my headspace back then. You were like, fuck Can this you? kid. I hate this kid. No. No? No. Uh, well, that's what I thought. So I, I, don't do, even, I, don't, I honestly I don't took myself out of your I life remember. because I thought this is what you wanted. This okay. was, so, so this this would have been... Yeah, this had to have been before June in 2016, because shortly after that, we went on tour, mm-hmm. and then Ethan and I, we did the 4OU tour, starting in America, ending in Australia, and then we all met up in Australia. If you had her deleted, how did you? How did we all meet up? Because I didn't I, orchestrate that's that. That's what I can't remember. That's Can what you? I can't remember, no. I don't know. I, I don't, think we had each other's numbers, and I, and I ended up... We, get, we got each other's numbers? I think so. Because I asked you why, why did you delete me? And then you re-added me. So I texted or you I when I was... Or I went to Snapchat you and it said, like, pending. <laughs> it was really random, though. Cause... <laughs> oh. oh, that hurts so bad. Well, I w- yeah. I went oh, to check God. my Snapchat and it said open, like, ten times in a row. Okay. So, fair. so that was revenge. No, all but, right, all right. but what happened was, so we, we had a 42-city worldwide tour, and the last show just so happened to be in Sydney. So we decided to take a vacation in Sydney, which I don't know, meant to be, who knows. Um, we took a vacation in Sydney, and I was like, you know what? I think that girl that I deleted is from Sydney. And I was like, I don't know my way around here. I don't know what to do here. You like, sound the biggest asshole. Right okay, now. I was, all right? Maybe no, I'm, okay, I'm going def- to defend him right now because we, t- we took a vacation in Sydney for four days. Mm-hmm. We saw you on the last day. We all met up. For the entire time of our vacation, he was nonstop talking about you. You just skipped ahead. Okay. No, but I'm just saying, you said, oh, I think that girl, but I'm, I am I will say he was nonstop talking about you. Like he was, oh, I hope we can meet up. You just, you're still skipping ahead. Relax. So yeah, let's talk about how we met. I okay. added you back okay. on Snapchat mm-hmm. um, because, because I did text you. I was like, I'm in Sydney. Is this where you're from? And I remember I sent you a Snapchat out my window because you could see the, the Harvard Bridge. Sydney yes. Harvard and Bridge. you had a geotag. Yeah. And yeah. I was like, I was like, is this where you're from? And yeah. You're like, yes. Yeah. Yes. That's that. So that was four years ago. Okay. Wow. Well. Um, and then, yeah, I had, we had a vacation up in the, like, the, uh, I'm not going to say where we were because we go there all the time, yeah. but in Australia, we took a vacation at, by the beach and I was like, do you, do you live like near here? And you're like, no, I'm like an hour away or so. So I was like, oh, I don't know how we're going to like meet up. Like, um, and then I ended up like hang, uh, meeting someone and we went cliff jumping closer to, right here. can you get it? Yeah. Can I make a wish? Can I make a wish? Yeah. Okay. Where is it? Okay. Right. Made a wish. All right. So then, yes, we were cliff jumping, and then that, we were cliff jumping, and I was like, "Do you live like closer to here?" And then you're like, "Oh yeah, I do. Maybe like 20 minutes or so." Mm-hmm. So I was like, "Okay, we should like meet up and get dinner or something." And then you were already like with your friend already had dinner, and then mm-hmm. I was like at dinner, and you just met us at the spot. Yeah. And then it was nighttime, and we I decided. You, yeah, I met you outside that sushi place that you guys went to. Yeah. Yeah. And then you you both were walking to my car. And I'd never, like, I obviously had never seen you before. And I was like, oh, holy shit. You were nervous? Yeah, it was crazy because I thought you were, like, just, I, I can't even describe it. And what's funny now is, wait, like. Wait, you thought it was what? Was, he a, like, was he a little larger in person? 
What do you mean? Like, did you think he was going to be short or something? <laughs> yeah. And then he was, yeah, and the, then he was a little taller. So you're like, yeah, oh, he, sh- yeah, he was taller and just like. No, but what were you about to say? But like, perfect looking. Oh. Like, I can't even describe that. It's just like you see good looking people, but like you were perfect like it was intimidating to look at you and then it's funny because you look back on photos of when i met you and like you have this long shaggy hair and i was doing like my first ever no shave november i had a cheesy ass mustache (laughs) and a purple streak in my hair yeah what What the fuck were you tripping oh god yeah i i thought the same thing about you when i first saw you too like i couldn't speak and i'd never been like that around anybody before yeah neither i was just like what why can't words come out Mm -hmm. of my mouth oh um and then so we did go cliff jumping and we went to the spot. And it wasn't it, just normal cliff jumping. No, no, no. I, okay. It yeah. was Let me, look, can I, can I explain? Yeah. So I, I like, you guys were like, I could tell you guys were nervous around each other. You, like the chemistry was in the air. Like the fact that you were both equally as nervous, it was like, it was like cute to me. I was like, oh, hell yeah. Because Ethan was talking about you nonstop. So I was like really happy as a brother and a wingman that like you guys had finally met. And so we went to this cliff jump spot and... Well, can we just it, say that it was like 10 p.m. and it was pitch black? No, no, no. It was, it was like midnight. <laughs> it was, it, so, it was yeah. like midnight. And um, in the day, this jump is sketchy because you have to jump out over these rocks and land in this one special spot. You could see the water is like darker in one area because it's deeper there. So that's where you want to aim when you jump. And it's about 40 feet, which is like... What's 45 or 3? I don't know the meters. Sorry, Chris. It's like 15 meters. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, it's like, no, it's like 17 meters maybe. That's a a high jump. 15 meters is 30 feet. No, it's 45. 15 meters, he's right. Okay, so it's a high jump. Like one of the highest cliffs that I've been off of, like second highest. I've been off one that was like a lot higher, but then then you just have to like, that's sketchy. But whatever, it's sketchy height where if you flop, you're going to get like messed up. And <laughs> what I didn't know about Christina yet was that she has a crazy fear of heights. Oh, crazy. Uh, and you did but it was it. also pitch black, yeah, which it, w- it was 10 times worse. Yeah. Or better because you couldn't see the bottom. This was no, the, it was definitely worse. Literally, it was, so, it was so dark. Okay, so you had a... There were sharks in there too. Okay, we found out that the day after. Like, oh. <laughs> all right, so... <laughs> but uh, I, I knew there were sharks. Because you're from Australia. Yeah. I, I'm from like Jersey. There's like not that many sharks. All right, so there's this fence. Oh, God. There's this fence that's like 10 feet high. You can't climb over it because it's like slippery. So you have to like go around the cliff and then like sk- like hold on to the fence for dear life over this water where it's like if you fall, it's not chill. And then you have to walk out to where you can jump and then it is chill. And so we all went. Um, we all jumped off in pairs. So like the two two dudes we were with jumped off together. Um, I jumped off with someone else and, and then – I'm looking up and I can't see Ethan and Christina. I was like, you guys. I couldn't see you guys at the bottom. And okay, so I wanted to. Okay, no, I did know there was sharks because when uh, when Alex and Nick jumped, I was like, they just stirred up the water. I need to go fast and swim out because the sharks gonna get notified that there's humans there. And then so yeah, I was looking up. I was like, you guys need to jump. You guys need to jump. And so here's here, here's what happened. I was at the top of Christina. I was like, okay, she she was like, can we hold hands and jump? Or did did I hold your hand? I don't, who made I, the, who I made the move? Hand. I no, because I think I was like, let's hold hands and jump so that we both jump together. And then I held your hand like this. Let's demonstrate. I held your hand like this, <laughs> like, like the best friend way, kind of. And then, and then she switched I it to that. I slid in. And, but here was my thought process. I was like, fuck no, I'm not, hold, I'm not interlocking fingers. As much as I really want to right now because she's like the prettiest girl I've ever seen, I'm holding her hand like this because if I jump and she doesn't and my fingers are locked like this and she pulls me back, I'm dead. <laughs> So you went like this. He told me that. I vividly remember him being like, dude, she switched to interlocking. <laughs> she did. And she went like this. I swear. She went like this. And I was like, I can't. I, I hate that I can't be happy about that right now. So I was like, fuck. Okay. Um, you, you're going to have to jump because if you don't jump, we're fucked. And right as we were about to jump, you pulled back. Yeah. It, we... We could have gotten severely messed up yeah. from that. But yeah, I, that I, luckily, I luckily didn't fall off. Um, and then... I think like the second time I just went for it, I like pulled you off the cliff and, yeah. and then it was successful. We jumped off the cliff and it was great. And that's how we met. It was the scariest thing I've ever done in my life. Really? Ever. Mm-hmm. Well, what a, I what? only told my mom about it recently. Really? She would have fucking killed me. What a night to me. And then we, even getting out of the water, it was like ice cold in that one area for some reason. And we had a phone flash, like yeah. an iPhone 5 at the time. And like, 
and, and just a bunch of barnacles that you can get cut on. Oh, it was sketchy. Oh God, what an, was what like, an Australian thing to do. I you know, know what I mean? I, know. Mm-hmm. I think we made Which is you, why I love Australia. We, we came from America and then made you do the most Australian thing that you've ever done. That's what Ethan and I like literally, I think part of our soul belongs in Australia, oh, true, which yeah, is a, yeah. another reason why I feel like you guys are meant to be because like when I first went to Australia, I was like, my soul belongs here. And then also my soul belonged with Ethan. So Ethan needs to be here. That's the weird thing. You that's were the there, so I don't know. Well, it was the last tour date. We decided to take a vacation there. And then can you imagine if I loved Australia, but he hated it? I would have never went back. And because mm-hmm. I went back, that's why we started talking more. I know. We'll get to that soon. But yeah. It's crazy. So, that, and uh, one, one funny, do you guys remember like the fucking, uh, like, Oh, okay, so the, the clip was so high that if you like went and your legs were a little bit open, like your butthole would hurt so bad. The water would literally go, it would penetrate your asshole. Uh, that's what it felt like. Like it, I butthole flopped. All right, but that, I don't remember that at all. I do remember that like, because it happened to me. It must not have happened to you because you would have remembered. All right, so. Can I just grab some lip balm? Mm-hmm. Yeah, you can. Uh, and I will, I will roll into the next question about, I guess we kind of we just talked about this, but was there a specific moment in which you guys knew that you had like a specific feeling for the other person you know before at first you said like oh he was he was so attractive to you and and vice versa and and she was so attractive to you yeah but but that's just looks yeah that's just looks like was there a moment when you guys were like okay yeah i feel like like there was a turning point do you remember Mm -hmm. yeah what was your moment um it was early last year oh what the fuck mine was like four years ago no 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 (laughs) no no like attractive wise the whole time like yeah. we, and, I, and I always thought you were cool, obviously. Yeah. No, I was just no you were always someone that I missed, even though like I never really knew you properly. Mm-hmm. We never really. And you got were always to know someone who made me laugh, no matter what. Like it was, it was just like, it was just a instant click. Mm-hmm. But early last year, early 2019, we started texting again because you stopped texting me back for a little bit. We started texting again, and that's when I don't know. We started talking like on a deeper level, like just really emotional mm-hmm. i think we we're talking about your dad a little bit and mm-hmm. then yeah i started like opening up to you about my family and yeah. things like that and then that's when i was like oh my god we're so similar because uh-huh. like those four years that i knew you like right away like the day i met you i knew there was something like different about you from yeah anybody same that I've as me met. like it felt like some sort of connection i don't know they say soulmate but like honestly, yeah. i honestly believe that's probably what it was yeah um like where it was like a lot of things could just go unsaid and like we just kind of knew how each other were feeling. It was weird. Mm. I always had like a, like, a, like an intuition that you were on the same page as me with like how I felt about you. But I was like, I didn't want to take the chance and just be like, oh, I'm just assuming things because I'm going to feel like an idiot. Yeah, like, I, we felt the same thing, but we just never said to each yeah. other. Yeah, and then every time I see you, I get reminded of that feeling. And then because you lived in Australia, I didn't see you for so long and that's why probably why we just didn't start talking sooner. Yeah. Um, But then the music video, let's talk about that. Yeah. yeah because we decided... Well, you, I did. Grayson did. Yeah. I, I, I cast and directed the whole thing. So I was like... For those of you that don't know that are listening, we directed a music video for an Australian band, and they're a great friend of ours. Um, called Cub, Cub Sport. Cub Sport. And they have a really beautiful story. Um, uh, which just, like, actually coming, ins- yeah, inspired the idea of the music yeah, video. With, with, with like opening up and coming to who they are and um, also falling in love yeah. to the bandmates. And um, we wanted to make a music video kind of around that. Yeah. Um, the so message was like love is love, and so there. I I needed a love interest for the movie, uh, for the for the for the, sorry, for <laughs> the, the video uh, for, movie, for the video music, movie, music video movie, yeah. music video movie, and um, I was like, who who are we gonna like yeah. cast for this? How do I ask someone to play a love interest a, for me? Yeah, and it was I was big, producing was as well. Moment. That was a big so there was, was like, a kiss yeah. in there. I, yeah, there was a kiss in there too, and I never kissed anyone. I didn't before, think you were like, even seen with a girl media. on social. Oh, no. maybe. Yeah, no. No, literally cuz never. Cuz back in the day like if I was seen with a friend of mine or like a, my, my friend's girlfriend or whatever, like people would be like they're dating or like yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah. And and people would get attacked. So like we were very like okay, let's not be seen with any girls. Yeah, we I kept don't that want. part of our lives very private. V- very private. So that was like a big step for me. Yeah. I was like in order to make this music video exactly what we want it to be and what it has potential to be, I need to have a love interest and a kissing scene in this yeah. music video and i was like i cannot cast this because it will seem like if i reach out to someone like hey do you want to have a kissing scene with me in a music video that's like me being like all right i, I made this huge elaborate excuse to kiss you and i didn't want it to be like yeah. that like, that's creepy as fuck that's so i was like great reach out. i was like grayson you need to cast this like so you, you so pick someone i casted it i think i cast it about like t- like 25 people and then we had like 100 like 100 plus extras which mm-hmm. was it was a lot of fun that mm-hmm. was like literally t- like one of the most fun things I've done in my life is creating that music video. But 
as Ethan said, it was like really serious. It was the first time he was going to be seen with a girl. Uh, mm-hmm. And so I was like, who is like really unproblematic that we might know? Um, and who, who is really sweet and we know is genuine and, uh, and also can act. Because that's the thing that we were worried like, okay, if I have a kissing scene with someone in the, in the video, obviously like back in, yeah, back in the day, like, yeah, yeah, people, exactly. yeah, yeah. and like people who were like our followers and stuff kind of went into investigator mode sometimes and would like deep dive into people's lives. So I was like, I don't want to like have a kissing scene with someone. And then I was they, also not, they like, said a something and then they get like attacked that. for it. So like, great, that's why Grayson was like, you said unproblematic or whatever. Just yeah. Like, uh, however you want to word that, but yeah, yeah just very like just positive and, and then that's it, you mm-hmm. know. I mean, because yeah, we didn't want like and that was the the general vibe of the music. Oh, oh the music video. video. We wanted everybody's real character to be sort of true to to the character that they were playing. Mm. Uh, and so yeah, you were the first person that popped in my mind, honestly. And um, we, oh. you were in Australia, and I, I emailed you very professionally. No, you texted. Me. Oh, but no. yeah, you did email me. He for my emailed measurements. you. I, I emailed you and um, Grayson <laughs> emailing you. That's the funniest <laughs> fucking concept. And then, uh, and then, and then, yeah, you agree. We we and we made it happen, and that was a lot of fun. Mm-hmm. I flew out for the week. Yeah, yeah. Thanks for doing that. Hey, you're welcome. What a time! And so, and we had a kissing scene. And that so what was was that kissing scene? That wasn't your first kiss. Our first kiss together? Yeah. No. no. All right. I know when your first kiss was. I don't even know why I asked that. Sorry. I just wanted to like <laughs> a little tea. <laughs> but the, but you didn't kiss again the rest of that trip. You guys no. were like, you guys, yeah. You guys no. Were, no, but yeah, we, we we barely even kissed before that, I will say. Yeah. Like we, we like didn't know each other. Like so that's what you thought about your first kiss was barely even a thing. <laughs> Jesus. Oh, Gosh. Jesus. Um, so we kind of just talked about how on camera, you're the first girl that Ethan had been like seen with in that light. Obviously you were acting, so it was a little bit different, but when things got serious, you know, um, when you guys started to realize that you like each other and you wanted to become serious together, what, who, like, how did you decide to keep things secret at first and why? Mm. Wait, before we go into this, can we just say that it was crazy because when, we met up last year for Hawaii. It was like, like the music video came to life. It was oh so yeah, weird. Yeah, How weird like is that? Like the storyline was like almost exact. And then we went to Hawaii and it was Hawaiian party. And we we're also with the Hawaiian party cast with Max and Connor. It was yeah. just so that weird. That was crazy. Yeah. And yeah. that wasn't intentional. And, but that, no, and that was and also I was like, just like, wow, that was like, is this like stars aligning? The, the message of the so music cool. video was like best friends like falling in love by accident and like yeah. not knowing how to break it to each other. And that's kind of what happened. So we weren't best friends by any means, but like. Mm. We were friends, you yeah. know. I, I wouldn't say we were anything like that before we fell in love, um, yeah. and then that it really kind of happened in Hawaii. Yeah, when we when we met up there. Did, yeah. you, did you guys say I love you there? No, but no, I, I definitely no. I uh, yeah. You said, I knew I loved you before I went to Hawaii. Oh, uh-huh. I did too. I knew he did. <laughs> I, I was really, I was always confused though because you would send me so many like mixed signals, but it wasn't. I until never. We, I never. Uh, have this is a not serious, an argument, all right? No, but I've never been in a serious relationship and have never had someone treat me the way you did. Oh well, congratulations. Okay, what what I even asked before? Congratulations. You asked about like keeping I said, it private. Yeah, keeping it private. So, so what, then after what, Hawaii, I planned on coming to Australia and spending a full month there, and we planned on living together. Mm-hmm. I was going to rent the house, and that's what we did. And I mean, Grayson was there too, third wheeling. Um. <laughs> there yeah, he is. You actually were. Like, oh, that was like the hardest I've ever really third wheeled in my life. I know. It yeah. was. It was like. I was going long. to the beach alone. <laughs> I was. I know. I feel and so I didn't bad. have a car. I couldn't drive there. I was fucking walking like two <laughs> miles barefoot to the beach. But you like that shit. I do love that shit. Oh my God. I do. So I do Grayson's dreams were coming true too. While while. Dude, I'm the type of guy to throw AirPods in and go walk through a fucking random city in a random country and like try to meet someone. But but also barefoot. Yeah. Yeah. So I was I was enjoying it, you know. I actually don't mind being a third wheel. Yeah, and I feel like now that you like, we're all like family now. So yeah. it's like it's, it's different. Not, yeah, it's normally not even like, like a third wheel. Someone in my position, they'd be like, you know, the, the best friend or brother of someone feels like, oh, like they're in a relationship now. Like you know, I, I have less of them. What? But I don't really like care because like I know, like I I value your relationship as you guys do, and I think it's like great. So I'm like just trying to be as supportive as possible. So I'll never complain about being a third wheel or some shit like that. Mm-hmm. So keep that in mind, okay? If I ever get into a future relationship, support me. I will. All right? No more fucking making fun of me and shit. 
I just like I sometimes you change who you are, and then I'm like, okay, red flag. Like you're act, like you feel like you can't be yourself around that person because yeah. I know you better than anybody. And yeah. have I changed since I started dating Christina at all? Uh, no, no, you haven't. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So, um, there's a little. Sorry, we had to work that out. There's a little. <laughs> <laughs> but what we were talking about. So Australia for a month, and then that's when we first told each other that we Privacy? loved each other. That's when we first told each other that we loved each other in Australia. Mm-hmm. And it was like, what, November 20th, because that's when I flew out. And we went yeah. to the beach at night, and we are talking. And then that's when we decided that we were officially dating, because before that, we didn't decide that. Yeah. But that night on November 20th, we're like, okay, let's just say we were dating on October 12th. Yeah, because technically... We kind of cheated the system a little bit. Yeah. I think people do that. It's normal. You guys were exclusive. Exclusive, mm-hmm. you guys yeah. Had, had feelings for each other, and then, yeah. Mm-hmm. And you probably just waited until you saw each other in real life to say I love you. Yeah, that's what we were doing. Yeah. The whole time in between Hawaii and Australia, we were like, oh, there's just like, I need to say something, but I just can't do it on text. Yeah. Though every single day. That was getting so frustrating. The distance yeah, it was. was fucking, that was crazy. Yeah, it was. That was my first time ever dealing with like long distance. So you guys kept it private because? Um, I, I don't know. I, I, it, was, it was so new. Yeah. You know, because like, well, first of all, I wasn't, I've never been like a social media person, so I wouldn't mm-hmm. put it online anyway, or I wouldn't, you, yeah. I wouldn't want it to put it, I wouldn't want to put it online, but I, I respect his privacy as just as much as my own. So, like, it was just a mutual thing. Like, I just don't want anyone knowing our business. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And yeah, it, then you get opinions and stuff that like you're not asking for. Yeah. And like, we've had a, a private friendship, I guess, for four years. Mm-hmm. So, like, what's, you know, what's, the difference exactly and, and I, I think like especially when you're starting a relationship it's so new and you're like just getting to know each other and then hearing other people's opinions on that person that you're getting to know may sway like the way you think because like the emotions are so raw at that point you're yeah. experiencing like all these new feelings that you never thought you'd ever feel before and then someone says some shit that catches you off guard and then that like it stays in your yeah. mind like there's just like mm. you don't need that stuff yeah so we decided to like not have that and then against our will but like we kind of like knew it would probably happen anyway because we went yeah it was definitely inevitable but yeah like people started leaking photos of us and stuff at like cafes and the beach and shit yeah yeah matching your sweatpants other pictures of you in sweatpants yeah that morning we woke up in australia and i had like 70 tags that's the investigator thing i'm talking about like sometimes my life feels like a crime scene like like, people like like, investigating like there's detectives it's crazy what they can find out Yeah. yeah the magnifying glass is thick sometimes uh yeah it was funny i saw that too because like i was like <laughs> and then the photo me at the my, dentist yeah <laughs> so there's a picture of christina with you in the in the cafe and this is when at first i kind of got out to the small group of investigators <laughs> um, uh it was you and your sweatpants holding ethan's hand or whatever you guys were standing next to each other and then there's a swipe and here's proof and it's you with fucking sunglasses out of the dentist like this and you have fucking the same sweats on and i was like this is the photo that you got found out in which is like yeah. found out what even is that <laughs> But that's funny. Yeah, and I, I'm a big believer in keeping personal stuff personal. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Especially, like, letting it breathe and, and figuring it out. And like you said, emotions are raw in the beginning of a relationship, so you definitely need to, like, digest them, mm-hmm. see how you really feel, spend some time with those thoughts and emotions, and then, and then make your decision whether or not you want to, like, let people... It's the same thing as kind of, like, introducing someone to your family. You know what I mean? Because that's... For us, it's kind of what it is. We've built this, like, kind of family that we have here. Yeah. And uh, you know, I'm not going to introduce someone to my mom if it's not serious. Yeah. So... And like, it's, our, it's good to take time. Yeah. For for anyone anyone listening, it's good to take time and like let things digest before you you make a big decision. Totally. You'll know. You'll feel it in your gut when it's right. Yeah. And I knew you guys knew. Um. All right. Moving on. This is all something. This upsets me to ask, and I but I want to because I want people to know what it's really like. There was a time where I believe you guys were still private, and it was like the people like you know that were finding out and stuff like that. And not necessarily um, private because like. Like we said, there was photos and everything that leaked, but we like never. You guys, you guys, yeah, you guys never took the step to make it public. Exactly, your guys' personal decision was to keep your relationship offline. Photos and stuff got out, and and assumptions, Mm -hmm. and then people started saying things that were just awful to you, you Mm -hmm. know, and um, and then you you ended up deleting your Instagram, Mm -hmm. which I I didn't want you to do. I wasn't in favor of you doing that because I didn't want to like let them win, but maybe that was just my ego because you know I care about you so much and I didn't want the other people to win over you, which it's not seen. I don't see it like that anymore. But tell us about that. Like what kind of what was like the turning point there? Okay, so 
this was after quarantine. Mm-hmm. So this I is already this when like, like there was a drastic change to life and like your mental health was yeah, just right. like yeah. plummeting. Yeah. So I I've I've always been a huge advocate for mental health and I w- I've always seen myself as like a confident positive person confident in myself not at, not in like an ego way but just like oh, yeah. confident in who I am yeah um and yeah so when people started putting two and two together and like oh my god I see Christine's bag on like you don't remember that whole mm-hmm. thing I remember I was in Jersey and um these accounts were made just about me um just like really ripping me to shreds and saying stuff that just wasn't true and blown out way out of proportion. And I was like reading these things and already I was feeling, it was quarantine, I was confused. I was, I I felt lonely, even though I had you guys, E especially, but like, I don't know, it was just a weird lonely feeling and you guys probably know exactly what that that, Mm -hmm. was like during quarantine. But um, I was away from home, I had no one, no family, no friends. Um, and then these people were saying things about me and I had no... Well, you I, didn't have uh, your family and friends around to tell you like... Validation you're still almost. Who you are. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Validation. So I was almost like reading these things and convincing myself that I was those things and I was so confused. Mm-hmm. And I just got into such a bad spiral. I was, I was like upset mm-hmm. all the time. I was crying all the time. I hated to see that. And... Yeah, I was like, I I can't believe that, you know, I'm I'm being attacked for something that I is completely out of my control. I was yeah. I was just. And I think we kind of expected it a little bit, which is sad to say. And I think yeah. it, this kind of answers your last question about why we kept it private because we were anticipating something like this. Yeah. And like. And I knew I knew it was coming, but when it hits you, it's like. Wow, I I felt like a deer in headlights. I had no idea and, what to do. And for you, I felt so terrible because it's like. I like started social media and I I liked having a following like when it, when it first started and I wanted to continue that and wanted to make it my career and my my life and you never chose to do that. So while while I was doing that with my life for the past 6 years, there was negatives that would come with it and mm-hmm. I was like, okay, I'm going to take these because there's so many more positives. But for you, like it wasn't your lifestyle. You didn't commit to it. You didn't ask for it. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, you're just like thrown into some sort of spotlight where people can just say whatever they want about you. Right. And, and then, then it does. It, it just start, it starts to make you be like, wait, do I do I really know myself? Are they telling me true things that I don't notice about myself? Mm. And it's, it's all made up bullshit. And it's probably like le- legit 12-year-olds who... I know. That's the know, thing. It's, it's crazy when you break it down and you think, okay, these are actual possibly 12-year-old girls saying this where mm-hmm. they have... They're so disconnected. But for us, if we get like a million positive comments, just that one negative comment sticks out like a sore thumb and you can't do anything about it. Like you can't shake that. You can't say, okay, there's a hundred people that are telling me I'm a great person and, and mm-hmm. whatever, you know, that the that one negative comment can take you over the edge. And so I think as, as humans, we're conditioned to think, ignore the hate, um, like don't, don't let them win, whatever that means. Mm-hmm. And so at, at that point, I remember I was on FaceTime with my mom and dad and I was crying my eyes out. I was like, I don't know what to do. Like, I feel so depressed from this. And I was like, I just want to, I want to delete everything. I don't want anyone to look at me. I don't want anyone to know who I am. I was at the time, I really wanted to be an actress. And my, um, my agent was sending me auditions to film. And I was like, I told him I was sick which at the time I was, but I I was like, I told him I was sick for the full week because I was like, I cannot do an audition. I don't want anyone to look at me. And I couldn't believe I was even saying that because it's just, it's so against who I was before Mm -hmm. that. So anyway, I I remember we were in Jersey and I grabbed the laptop and I was so hysterical and I was like, I'm deleting my Instagram. Like I need to go off the grid. I don't want anyone. It was just a complete like identity crisis, like, Mm invasion of privacy sort of thing yeah. and because in your face with the decision it's like do i let them win and like quit like they probably want it, me like, to what but does then that what even does mean exactly. exactly and so th- that's i think what it's I... just it, it just I, it kind of boils down to like an innate thing that all of us humans have where it's like the reason why we pay attention to the hate comment is because we're so i mean we're, we're programmed not conditioned but we're legitimately programmed to focus on the negative so that we can address the problem because 
if you think about it back in the beginning of time, if there was a problem, it's probably life threatening. So it's like now that these things are just like systemic little like fucking it's bullshit. Like it's yeah. like little hate comments that you think are like this life threatening problem. Your brain is convinced that it is. Um, but it's not. And then that's why you like focus on it. You cannot, like, no matter what anyone says, like don't focus on the heat. Like it's, it's not possible. It's not it's possible. Not. And yeah, at that, at that time I was really thinking about all the people who get bullied on a daily basis, bullied in school, cyber bullied. Mm-hmm. And I was, I was so heartbroken. And when you deal with it firsthand, you're like, this is, this is like life threatening. Mm-hmm. Like, and so I, yeah, I just, I want everyone to know who's going through the similar thing that you can stick up for yourself and it's not weak or you're not letting them win. It's just, I felt great. When I deleted my Instagram, I felt great. Four months I was off and I was the healthiest I've ever been mm-hmm. mentally. Yeah. I, I was, I had time to focus on my business. I had time to focus on my, with my family, my friends and just live life. Yeah. Like I was hardly on my phone, only texting you. Yeah. And, and I, I just, say I'm really proud of you for making that decision because even I, like I was, stupid i let my ego take over at the time and i was like don't let them win i was telling you i know i remember you said you'd be really disappointed i feel uh, yeah i feel really fucking bad for saying that no but that's what i mean is we're so conditioned to think that's the right thing to do to protect ourselves but it's not it's a yeah it's a big lesson like sometimes you just have to 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 fight back not even that but just stick up for yourself yeah it's okay to let them know that it gets to you because it does yeah and most of the time if you if you say something it's not retaliating it's it's almost just like most of the time they apologize or, yeah. or they'll stop most yeah. of the time there's obviously like 10 percent that just you know get a thrill yeah. from doing it but they're going through their own shit too though and that's probably why they're doing it um yeah totally. which sucks you know mm-hmm. it sucks mm-hmm. and uh when when you were going through all that i i was also like not against it but i same thing. It was that ego in me, and I was like, "Chris, don't let them win." Like, I don't want to see someone that I love, like, get, like, you know, mm-hmm. succumb to these people that are just like that yeah. I, I could give a shit about. You know what I mean? And I'm gonna hate comments. Yeah. And, and then it wasn't until recently when I started dealing with the same shit that you are. You 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 were back then, and I literally like went off Twitter for a month and a half. You know what I mean? In the past six years since I downloaded it, I was on it every single day, mm. tweeting, engaging with people, talking to people, like speak in my mind and stuff like that and then did it help going off twitter it did yeah there was a turning point i mean because we went through a few things personally um where it was also like none of none of anyone's business and um you know whatever it, it, it was untruthful shit being said about us and then people were like kept just saying it and saying it and saying it and saying it and it, it, it started making me be like what the fuck and then like questioning my own character right that's what and i've always known who i am fully mm-hmm. and so like every time i went on twitter i was in my mentions and people were just telling me i'm this person who i'm really not but i was like so just like being attacked over and over again that my mental state was just like weak mm. and uh and just to see that like constantly while i'm already in this weak and vulnerable point i was just like oh i'm over it and i just ha- i had to get off twitter and i didn't mm-hmm. want to let them win i was almost i almost deleted my twitter too yeah, yeah. and I, uh, I hopped off too and that's something that i wouldn't have done if you had never done that like you truly led by example and I, I followed what you did in that situation and that was something that i've been doing this for six years and like i'm gonna simp out real quick but like w- w- if you will if that's what you want to call it but like you're amazing and the way you think is admirable like i thank you th- yeah i i guess i've struggled with like ego issues where i'm like i can't let them fucking win but like to see you prevail by you know quote unquote letting them win and swallowing your pride in a sense and focusing on yourself and not trying to prove a point um it taught me to do that and my life has been a lot better since that's so good i think everyone everyone that's listening should take that mm-hmm. as advice because yeah. it's it's really, really important to focus on yourself. And that from an outside perspective, seeing all the shit that was going on with you guys and, and seeing people call you these things that weren't true, it was so frustrating for me. Yeah. So I guess it it was the same thing. And it's people that too, don't know the truth at all. They don't know the truth at all. Oh God, if they only knew the fucking truth. I know, I know. It's but, so it's, but again, ego, it's, I know. It's swallow the pride, it's not, it, 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 I know they don't. They don't deserve the truth. I just don't want to be judged about something that's false for the rest of my life. And, and I think and I wake up every day and I still see some shit about it. But you, there's nothing you can do about it because that will happen for the rest of your life. So right. who you are going forward is the only thing that matters because that's who people are going to know who you like, who you to be. Like it's four years ago, I deleted Christina on Snapchat. I, 
who the fuck was that guy? He made a stupid ass decision. Yeah. Would I ever make a dumb decision like that ever again? Hell no. So like I, I, mean, I, I mean, I grew up. You wouldn't know a decision's dumb until you make it. But and I'm you just, realize in retro. Okay, well, I'm just saying you grow up and you de- like when I when you said like you deleted her like that's out of character for me. Obviously, I'm like, well, yeah. that's like a douchebag thing to do. Yeah. Like you grow up, you know what I mean? So it's just you, you, you are who you are in the present day, and that's that's all that fucking matters. I know. I, uh, I. I'm just still struggling with the shit, and I wish people knew the truth, but whatever the yeah. fuck. I don't yeah, know. behind closed doors, you guys have gone through the most, the craziest shit this year. Yeah. It's, it's like unimaginably fucked up. Mm-hmm. It is. And like my 2019 was unimaginably fucked and up. And there's a lot of And people... honestly, 2020 somehow topped it in the most fucked up psychotic way. Mm-hmm. It did. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It did. I lost my dad last year, and this year has attacked me more. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's, it doesn't make any sense. But, uh... Yeah. All right, on to brighter note. You guys went public. And I think that's yes. when things, and right before that, I think that's when things really started to change for the positive. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I, like, all I see now is comments just saying how amazing you are. I, I knew. And I, I appreciate that so much. I would tell so you, much. as soon as people found out who you really were, they would, they would love you. And that's why I'm so happy that we have you on the podcast because, like, I wanted people to see, like, the true you and, the, and, and get, like, the full hour, however long this is going to be. Like, I, I don't care how long I can't be this far from you when we're talking. I feel like I'm not talking properly. No, I, you're, I can't you're, talk you're doing great. so much pressure. You're doing great. You're doing okay. great. This episode's going better than I thought it even could. And I had it high expectations to begin okay. with. But, like, I really wanted people to, to know the real you. Like, and I knew that they weren't really getting it from the vlogs and the YouTube content that you had been in. It was, like, mm-hmm. too, it was too short and snappy. And it was, mm-hmm. it was fun to make. It was really fun. Um... But it didn't show the real you or the real version of our other friends that have been in it and, and the real version of Ethan and I. And I think that's right now it's why we're on we're on pause and we're we're Yeah. Which to, I'm, to get I'm back really in touch happy with our, our purpose. And I think we all have a purpose that aligns with one another's. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um but yeah, I'm really I'm really happy that people are gonna get to know the real you from this. People that have seen you around and stuff like that in our content. Cause yeah, that was that was a thing about vlogs, don't get me wrong. I loved your vlogs. I th- I thought the content was amazing. Um, I just thought, thank you. There was a, there's a line between your personal lives and, and public lives and yeah. public lives. Yeah. And I, th- I just think the vlogs were going a bit too, they were a bit too invasive at, at times. Yeah. And there were points where I was watching the vlogs and I was like, this doesn't even look like me like that. Yeah. Like, yeah, I guess it comes down to editing and cuts and all that, but I mean, there was points where I was like, I kind of look annoying on camera, but it's, yeah, I guess that's just vlogs. It's just quick, yeah, quick yeah. little snippets. Yeah, it's no it's hard to, like it's that. hard to get someone's yeah. personality across. Yeah. I feel like people just have vlog. a different style of comedy too. Like, like, I would say we have a comedy based channel and stuff like that. We're trying to make people laugh. That's mm-hmm. our, that's our main goal. It's to make people laugh, make them feel happy. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? And just, and if we could possibly change someone's day around for the better, that's, that's what I'm here to do. And that's why I just started my YouTube channel. And, uh, I feel like in the vlogs, yeah, we were able to do that, but then we also had to sacrifice like part of who we actually were for some jokes. Yeah. There was times where I felt like I had content goggles on where I yeah. was like making just poor choices that were out of character for myself for the content sake because I was seeing the post edit in my head. Mm-hmm. I was like, this is what the video is going to look like in the end. All right, now I'm going to go do this. But I didn't have my two feet on the ground. Like this is what I have to and do I, in real life in order for the video to look like this. Yeah, but there was no real life really. And it's crazy because yeah. you guys in weren't into moments. vlogs. I remember you saying... Let's do real life before content. Yeah. So let's film real life stuff. And if, you know, like a joke comes across, then film it. Mm -hmm. But then over time, subconsciously, even it just kind of flipped the other way. It was content first and then real life, which it, which bothered me because I, I, I just, I thought it didn't give you enough time to breathe. You had no, there was no no time. There was no separation between personal and public. None at all. Got a little like that. Yeah. I had a lot of fun making them though. I will say that it reignited my love for for creating content and And directing. Yeah. Because like yeah, it was great. The content seems like so like short and snappy and like minimal effort, but it's crazy amounts of effort that you have to put in because it's really like it's telling a really really fast paced story. It almost threw it back to like the Vine days where it's like I think that like when I was making vines. That was like the most I've like directed in a while because it's like you have to tell a story in such a short amount of time. Yeah. And that's what vlogs did. Um, but yeah, I feel like our, our, our channel is just like, I, I love connecting with people who watch us. Yeah. And that's something that I missed. It was more like I was doing things for like, just for comedy's sake rather yeah. than like connecting with someone. Yeah. You know? So I don't want to, I don't, didn't mean to make this about us at yeah. all. Yeah. But it did, it, it, it gave me that idea when I was like, 
they just saw you in such short form. You know what I yeah. mean? And like some people could have got the idea that, oh, like you said, like, oh, that part was annoying or whatever the fuck, but like mm. that's not who you are. Yeah. You've never annoyed me once and like you, you live here <laughs> and I think you're you're one of the best people I've ever met. And so I wanted people to see that. Thanks, and, and I think they can with this podcast and um, and where the videos are going in the future, you know, they'll be able so to see that So excited for more. that. I'm so confident in that too. Yeah, me too. I'm really Thank excited. Thank you. And you helped us make the decision. You really did. Really. Yeah. I think it's 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 going to be the best move yet. Thank you. Best Thanks chapter you. yet. Thanks a lot. Yeah, it's it's YouTube is just like full of new chapters. That's what mm-hmm. it is. It's cool though. Yeah. You get to try new things. Yeah. So you guys, you you went public. I think things changed for the better in that that around that time. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? You guys begin like nothing but love, really. And and I think yeah. it's it's crazy how like because you guys are so young and you, and you joke around and you talk about things about marriage and stuff. It's sometimes not jokes. Maybe I mean mm-hmm. like it, it is serious because you guys are serious with each other. But you don't really have, like, I would assume in those situations, like, in, in when, when you did that, people would be like, you guys are too young, you don't know what the fuck you're saying, you know what I mean? Because that's like, a, a lot of people would play a devil's advocate for a young yeah. couple. Like, and they think they're jumping the gun. But with you guys, it's like it you that, fucking tell. Yeah, no one no one gets mad, or no one's like, oh, you guys are, like, thinking irrational, you're too young, you're, not, you're too young to get married. Every I've time, seen a every couple time comments I mention, like that, but yeah, it's really? like... Every time I mention marriage, like, in the slightest, everyone's like, just propose ready, you little fucking bitch, like... <laughs> <laughs> what, what are you waiting for? And like, honestly, yeah, I don't know. But um, I don't know. Maybe they can just feel it. Yeah, too. which leads me to my next question. When's a proposal? When? No, it's <laughs> not. Ah, ah, this is uh, it's this fucked is up. Bro, I was stretching. That's oh, funny. he was stretching. Sorry. I didn't mean to. <laughs> no. What? Uh, no, nah, I'm not going to ask you guys about marriage. That's, that's on you. You guys take your time with that and you figure it out. But what do you guys see? Where do you guys see yourself five years? <laughs> uh, married? Definitely married by five years, yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. um, we got to have a house in our favorite part of Australia and seven kids. No. Seven kids, five years. We're going to have... What? We're, we're Two gonna, twins. No, no, no. We're going to have sex tuplets and then just one child. Okay. Okay. We have twins on both sides of the family, so that's going to be You do, Chris? Yeah, my brother was a twin. Oh, yeah, that's right. Not identical, though, right? Yeah, identical. Oh, wow. I had no idea. Mm-hmm. So that... But identical is just a mutation, so you could. Yeah, but could, it is the male gene. It means it's strong. But we could have the we could have. Oh frater- my god, we have twins. <laughs> I'm pulling for it. <laughs> what have you? Have I'd be the one to? who gets triplets. Yeah. I would. Can oh I, god. I don't, oh, but how no. amazing would that be? I know it'd be amazing, but like, oh. I don't want to put just... Grayson on blast. What? But like, I just want to ask you like an actual question. Like, do you feel like we've done everything together our entire lives? Yeah. I'm now in a committed relationship. Obviously, Christina lives here and stuff. Like, do you, like, everything you've done your entire life, I'm like, okay, I, I have to do that. Like, if you land a trick, a skate trick, I have to do it. You got up the tramp wall when we filmed that last vlog, I had to do it. Yeah. Like, I'm in a committed relationship. Does it make you feel like you need to be in a committed relationship? Yeah, it did. Mm-hmm. It did. And I I tried to the point where it was, like, I, it was forced. Yeah. You know, it was unnatural. Um, and it didn't work. And then I tried again. Mm-hmm. And, um, I think it was part of like the whole Corona unsettling feeling where you're in quarantine. You have no idea like what the fuck's going to happen tomorrow. So Mm -hmm. you feel really unsettled and you're looking for an anchor to like ground you. Yeah. And for me, that was like a relationship. Um, but also like your identical twin, but also my identical twin is now in a committed relationship and it's super healthy. And yeah, like, uh, I'm not jealous or maybe envy, not envious. I don't know. Whatever the word is, I, I really you envy me. I, yeah, you, I envy you guys. No, the connection. I, I guess. Really, but I really value. You're I really value it. Like when you come into the kitchen in the morning and we're all chilling out. I'm like, damn, it would be sick to have a girlfriend too. You yeah. know. <laughs> <laughs> but but now I'm I'm totally fucking chilling on my own path, and I like. Yeah. I know that ours are separate. As similar as we are, I know that they're separate, and so I. Uh, Grayson already feels like the Funkle of the house. So. Oh, I'm always the yeah. Funkle, dude. I'm the fucking. I'm the fucking. Dunkle too. What's Dunkle? Oh, that's the dad uncle. You don't. You haven't heard of that. What? Your dad and an uncle. Yeah, We're both gonna be Dunkles. Your kid's gonna get us confused sometimes. So oh, are our kids? Are are our kids gonna get me and him confused? Oh no, they probably will. Oh, uh, if we okay. So if we were to have a kid tomorrow, what kind of accent would it have? Think about it. No, no. Think about this. Like obviously, when the kid goes to school, if he goes to school in America, he's gonna have an American accent. Yeah, if he goes obviously. to school and he lives his life in Australia. He's surrounded by Australians. He's gonna have an Australian accent. I want an Australian accent. If, but here's the thing. Here's the thing. If obviously quarantine's not gonna continue forever, but if it were to like, if we were to raise a kid in quarantine in like these next three months, or three years rather, 
when it first starts talking, is it gonna have what, what accent would it have? Mine. It would sound like me. <laughs> You guys, are, you guys, be, all right. We're going out real quick. I'd be like, okay, all right. Say hi. Say hi. I would just be teaching all vocabulary. Have it fucking. And then, uh, yeah, he, I would, he would have a. Great I'm definitely answer. having a baby in Australia. So if my daughter has an Australian that. accent, it's adorable. A little baby with an Australian accent. Sometimes there's. Like, I knew a family, um, and they they moved to New Jersey from England, and the th- there was four. The three younger ones had. English accents and the one older one that I was friends with had an American no. accent. He turned it off, I think, because he went to school and maybe because he was older and kids were like, hey, where are you from, boy? And so he probably was just like, yeah, uh, New Jersey. <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, but I'd also love to raise kids in Jersey, though. Mm. Yeah, That'd we got to figure nice. out where we're going to do that. So that's yeah. your five-year plan. I don't have a five-year plan. I don't think it's possible. Yeah. I think, corru- I think th- th- this time taught us that no one can have a five-year plan, mm-hmm. really. Yeah, unless unless it's like a five-year work plan or something like that, you know what I mean? Or a five-year no, a five-year workout plan. But even then, things come up. You get promotions. You get uh, the opposite of promotions. You know, mm-hmm. you get um, the cool thing about us is we don't really need to have a plan. It's like whatever we're feeling at any given moment, like the other ones, kind of we're just down for. Mm-hmm. Cool. Like you just said, like okay, we we got to raise our kids in Jersey or wherever. Like I know that when it comes time to do that, we're just both going to be in agreement automatically. Yeah, we're like the same person. It's weird. It's really weird how similar you are to me. Maybe that's what I felt like when I first met you. I'm like, okay, that's me, but a girl. Is that weird? I think we're the same people too. It ju- really weird things too. Mm. Yeah, like, and we have a group chat called the Three of Us because I feel like it's kind of, we're kind of like triplets in that sense. Yeah, we're yeah, and all think alike. Uh, like we immediately have the same opinions on everything. It's weird. There was a time I don't know if you you said this in a video already, but. Um, Gray was out in the the living room and you were in the room and I was walking out to the kitchen and I was like scuffing my feet with my with my air forces and and then he he turned around to ask you a question and and, and started asking the question and then looked up and he's like oh what the fuck I thought you were Ethan yeah you guys both walk like like lazy sex as shit <laughs> I know yeah you guys both walk the same we're lazy sex as shit yeah, you guys both are. sleep until like eleven no we really are like I'm like we were up before you today so. yeah we were yeah. You just wouldn't that. know because we just sat around in bed for an extra couple hours. Yeah. <laughs> I like, couldn't scrape myself out of bed this morning. No, but it's reason. it's so convenient because it's like, you know, when I don't know. I guess some people I've seen them have problems in relationships where they're like, oh, like I gotta like go on a date night, like I promised my girlfriend, or you know, something like that. Yeah, or the, like or if we if I if I promise you like a date night, and then I'm like, oh damn, I'm just like not feeling it. Like you're just not feeling it either. <laughs> Immediately before yeah. we even say it, we're like, okay, like if we were both like, okay, let's go on a date, and like. I, we, we never feel like we went on a date we once. Almost feel we, like dro- we drove all the way to where was it? Sam, Sam, Santa Barbara. Yeah, yeah, yeah. S- Santa, Barbara. Santa Barbara. And we're gonna sleep there the night in the yeah. spring event, and then we're like, wait, oh. fuck this. We're like, oh, let's just go back and sleep in our own bed. Yeah, yeah. You guys, you guys uh, have like the same. It's so weird. It's like we had our one year. Let's do something epic for our one year, and then we're like, no. Let's just fucking chill. What did we do? Oh, the picnic. Yeah. Yeah, that was nice. Oh, it was good. But like, yeah, it was really but it nice. was like you know we wanted to like maybe go. So I don't know. We were just like that's good enough. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I didn't really care what we did. Damn, me either. That's funny. Wow. Well, aren't you guys lucky? That's the guess. The f- the moral of the no, episode. No, Greg, I can't. I'm ki- I'm I can't wait to. I'm kidding, to guys. Name. No, I I'm really glad we but got I'm this. But so, I'm I'm so glad you found your independence. Thanks. Yeah, me too. Yeah, I am too. I feel I feel like myself. And by the way, the I don't I don't mean to go into this, but like your previous attempts to be in a relationship were not your fault anyway. No, no, no. Like you were anyway. I was trying. No, you I know? feel like you and you and who you were. You just you put your whole heart on the line. Yeah, yeah. that's a thing. Yeah, that shit hurted, but I'm all good. Yeah, and also. I'm really happy about this episode. I'm really happy that people got to see the real you. Finally. You know, the the long form real you. The uncut Christina. Chris. Chris. I can't say Christina. No, I guess I can, but I should say Chris. I've never called you Chris once. Yeah, sometimes you call me Chris. No, I've called you Chris like once or twice by accident, and I felt really weird. I felt felt like Grayson. I was like, what the fuck? Yeah. All right, well. It feels like we didn't talk about anything now. 
Do you right. feel like that when you record? We were just chilling. Yeah, I guess. That's the that's, that's, the, that's the fun part about it. It's just like a conversation. Guys, can we get a cat or something? We need to get I'm a cat. I'm allergic. We need a cat. Well, the thing is, when we get a house together, we're going to have cats. We're going to have... And you need to do your shot. Animals. You need to get your shots, Grayson. Well, I'm not going to be able to see my fucking knees and Because nephew. you keep missing your shot appointments. Get your fucking shots. Adele, you didn't remind me. Uh, she, she reminds you every sh- day. Oh, fuck, <laughs> she does remind me every day. I don't think I, I don't think I hear it. Well, then you can't come to our house, and we're gonna oh have an epic God. house. We're gonna have. A I grew up on a farm, and so did I. So did he. But raising, he just had to stay far away from the animals. Farm. Let's raise kids on a farm. I with think pets. every child should grow up with animals. Guys, you guys don't think I love? I have fucking animals tattooed all over me because I love them so, so much. Let's well, get, get one. your fucking let's shots. Get a little piglet. I'm Are you allergic to pigs? So allergic. Oh, like I'll actually die though. But it's not like oh, I get itchy. I would deal with that. I get asthma and I end up. Yeah, I, I know. Like if I didn't have an inhaler, I'd be dead right now. Like actually, it's bad. Gosh, I don't know. Maybe, maybe uh, you get your shots, Grayson. Maybe my nervous system will figure it out. Or get day. your fucking shots. How many times do I have to tell you? I'm gonna keep doing it. I'll get my shots. Can I get them tomorrow? Tomorrow's Thursday. Yeah, I can. Tomorrow's Thursday. Tomorrow's Thursday, so I can, right? Oh, my, maybe it's closer to Thanksgiving. I don't know. I, I think I'm gonna be able to swing in real quick before the, the festivities start. It's close for Mondo's birthday. Oh, yeah. Oh, shit. Mondo's birthday tomorrow. Everybody, guys, if, I mean, I guess you're listening today. Tomorrow is thanks, Mondo. Let's go, boy. Wish, wish Mondo a happy fucking birthday. And A, like this episode, not only for Christina, but for Mondo to come on the podcast one day. Because Mondo, Mondo face reveal. Oh, shit. Because, yeah, like like Christina um, and... Mondo brings a great fucking energy to this house. Mm. I feel like we're all, we're all like happy family all, here. Yeah, all we're all so really supportive of each other, and yeah. that's it great. Feels, this house feels great. Yeah, it does. And we have an Adele podcast too. Yes, and we will have an Adele podcast. Not, not the, not the singer. We can't get her. Yeah, not yet. <laughs> I don't know if we ever will be able to. That'd be, but hey, we have an even better Adele. Oh, dude, everyone's good in their own way, right? I'm also saying this because I, I want Adele stands to attack us. Yeah, it's true. No, but for real. Yeah, you're right. I wouldn't know about the 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 um, OG Adele. Are you the OG Adele? She's. I was born before she was famous. I'm OG. Yeah, but she was born before you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's not get into it. We'll have both of the Adeles on the podcast one day together. The oh same. my god! <laughs> yes. But thanks for doing this episode, babe. I know that you were um, nervous because. I still kind of am. Yeah, but yeah, I and mean, you have a reason to be like you're not. You're new to this stuff, and w- what happened earlier in this winter and everything, and it's just yeah. been like it's been a fucking crazy year. I think you're gonna get a lot of love for the episode. You you better you better give her love. Oh, I hope. I, I mean, I think you, I think I think you should. Thanks. All Thanks right, for guys. having me on. Yeah, of course. Thanks for coming on. Of course. Of course, you're in the room every single time we record. I know. I know. I know. <laughs> All right, all right. We're going to finally... Oh, wait. We have a spread positivity shout out. Wait, here we go. Let's get a... How? Oh, shit. I don't want to miss this opportunity. Spread positivity. And you guys can get these hoodies on dolentwins.com right now. Spread positivity hoodies. Let's get... Designed by our sister. Yes. Okay. And this spread positivity shout out goes to... And I really like this one a lot. Jess. Um, and Jess says that she nominates herself because she believes that she's spreading positivity by showing people that no matter what disability you have, you can follow your dreams. Jess was born with slight cerebral palsy in her left side, um, but she says that if you have scars or a disability, or a disability, do not be ashamed to show the world your true you and never give up on achieving your goals because just last year, she has been crossing things off her bucket list. That's amazing. Last year she, amazing, cro- she crossed one of the most important things off her bucket list, which was a, a big goal of hers. Wow. Which is amazing. That's awesome, Jess. You know what I mean? I think, to me, what's really stood out in this, um, and thank you for sharing, um, because it, it, it really does motivate me a lot. I'm going to be honest, Jess. Um, and I think it's amazing how you flip you know, your disability um, to be a sort of motivation that propels you to do to do greater things. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I think that that's really special, and um, you're going to inspire many by sharing that. So thank you very much. You already so inspired inspiring. me. Mm-hmm. Inspired all of us. Thanks, Jess. All righty. Yes, thank you very much. Um, all right. So on that note, we will we will wrap up the podcast. 
This is one of my favorite episodes ever. Me too. Uh, leave a like. I kind of want to stay on now. <laughs> you should Can come I? back. Yeah, you should come back. There's no saying you can't. Okay. Uh, we post podcasts every Thursday here on this channel, Deeper with the Dolan Twins, and you can, you can come by and, uh, and just have a convo with us. Also, if you want to be nominated for a Spread Positivity shout out and recognize next week, you can nominate yourself, you can nominate a friend, um, or somebody that you know or uh, that you've heard of who's Spread Positivity. I love reading these comments, by the way. I always do. Yeah, they're great. They are great. Who, we have an amazing like you know, someone who's, family here. Someone who's spreading positivity in the community because we love to, to show them uh, that we that we, we care about what they're doing because we feel it's really really important. And Lorey is FaceTiming me. Spreading positivity is cool. After flaking on me all day. <laughs> so I'm, gonna fucking, I'm not going to answer. No, I'm just kidding. Like, Don't answer. Right, as soon as this is over, I'm going to. <laughs> <laughs> no, but spreading positivity is really cool. and um, Really cool. You should be proud of it. So let us know why you're proud of yourself for spreading positivity. Uh, I feel like I really didn't talk this episode. You did great. Yeah, hey, you're not supposed to. Me like, neither. She's just so you stunning. So you're so much. stunning. I, I can't Sorry. speak when Jesus. I look at you. All right, tell me, tell dude. It's my fucking podcast too. I can't. I can't. I can't just speak. Keep it rolling. Tell me here. more. <laughs> What's your favorite thing about me? Just, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. This All right, is not wrapping up. All right. We love you guys. Love you guys. We'll talk to you next week. Peace.